The Toyota 1000 Desert Race returned to its Botswana roots for the second year in succession from July the 7th through to July the 9th. This year, the Toyota event, always a highlight of the South African off-road calendar, took on the role of the second round of the South African Cross-Country Rally Championship. An innovation this year saw the pre-race formalities and the ceremonial starts based in a busy shopping mall in the centre of Kaveroni, the capital of Botswana. It was a colourful scene with the citizens of Kaveroni and competitors from all over South Africa entering into the spirit of the affair. For some of the locals, pre-race activity and some of the weird machinery was all a little strange. Proceedings got underway with a 20-kilometer prologue in a lion park outside Haveroni to determine race start positions. The car's set up right, the car's short car, it's not a long car, and on the tight stuff we get through a little bit quicker than the other blocks. And I'm just going to race it at my own pace. Most competitors used the prologue as a vehicle shakedown rather than an all-out sprint. Former winner Artie Renica wasn't interested in heroics. As you see, the incomes begin a photo mark and you buy a stand tight and the tail turn you and as you all can ride and you have a photo mark by all the incomes and then you have to be ready for the outcome. Apart from determining start positions, the prologue certainly served another useful purpose. Competitors quickly discovered that the Toyota 1000 Desert Race was going to offer up an awful lot of sand and thorns. While one or two were given a reminder that following the route sometimes presents problems, a few eyebrows were raised when Springbok Books Carolyn came out of retirement to share a drive with brother Richard. My book needs me, so I decided we'll share the drive. And uh, we're just gonna, he's gonna drive one off from the refill and I'll drive the other off. For all the competitors, marking along the route was a major concern. I think the organizing seems good, so I hope the route will be safe. And normally, if, if, you know, not, if it's well marked, it's normally safe, so I'm gonna go as fast as I possibly can. Then there were those for whom a weekend of racing in the Botswana bush came to a premature halt. By and large, the prologue was incident-free, but there were a couple of the expected frontrunners who ran into minor problems. One of those to find himself inconvenienced in such a fashion was Rob Walk. At about the 12k mark, uh, an oil pump valve came off. But I jumped out and managed to get that on fairly quickly. I only lost a minimum amount of time, I think about two or three minutes. Pre-race favourite Alfie Cox on the pro-action Castrol KTM also proved that even the top stars are not infallible. For the bikers and car crews alike, sand, more sand and thorns would be on the race menu over the next two days. But that was fine by Herman Sulwalt. On 1,000 kilometer marathon events like the Toyota 1000 Desert Race, the secret of success for both bikers and car crews is to pace yourself. The race is won more often than not in the last 100 kilometers. Wise words from an old hand at off-road racing. The route for day one took crews from the start in Kaveroni to a refuel at Shoshong at around the halfway mark for racing section one. From there it was on to the overnight stop at the Kama Rhino Reserve, not far from Serowe.